welcome to our online church experience. We're so glad you're here. The service is about to kick off, but before we do, I'm just popping into your screens to give you some quick tips on how to best navigate your experience. If you're joining us on a laptop today, to the right of your screen, you will see a live chat room where everyone who is watching online can pop in and say hello. So why don't you pop in, say hello. You've just got to put in a quick nickname so we know who you are, but jump on and say hi to everyone. Down the bottom right corner of the video screen, you will see a button that says live prayer. If you click on this, you will be taken into a private one-on-one -on -one chat room with one of our team ready to pray with you. If you are new here or visiting for the first time, we would love to say hello to you. So jump up to the top panel on your screen, click on new here, fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. To participate in giving during our online service, you can jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on giving, and that will take you to our online giving options so you can participate during the service. Hey kids, to access your online kids program, jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on kids, and you will find what our amazing Kids Church team have prepared for you, which is actually accessible 24 seven. So anytime during the week, jump up, click kids and you will find your online service. If you would like to connect with us further or let us know that your details have changed, jump up to the top menu, click connect with us, fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. If you are joining us on a mobile today, you will notice that under our online service is the live chat room, which you can feel free to participate in. If you click on the live prayer button under the online service on your screen, you'll be taken to a one-on-one -on -one private chat room with one of our team who is ready to pray with you. This will automatically open on your screen, but to simply navigate back to the online chat room with everyone who is watching from the service, under the online stream, just click chat and you'll be back. If you are new here, would like to find your online giving options or find the kids program or simply connect with us further, just jump up to the top left of your screen, click on the three bars and you will find those options ready for you. Thanks so much for joining in on my brief tour on how to navigate the online church experience. It's about to begin, so quickly go grab a tea, find a comfy spot on the couch and enjoy the service. church experience. I'm Mike. Yeah, and I'm Ben, and we are part of the team here at C3 Church Lane Cove. C3 Church Lane Cove is a spiritual community centered around Jesus. Yeah, and we are so excited that you've joined us this morning at 10 a.m. online. Mm. What a place to be. It's brilliant. 
Um, if you're new here this morning, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, you could pop up in the chat. Yeah, and don't forget to pop in the chat and have a, have a talk to somebody. Say you're here. Say some encouraging things. That's right. Or you could click on our connection card and uh, we'll get in contact with you during the week. Shoot you a text message or perhaps take you out for coffee if you like and get to know you. We just love people. We do. Just yep. connecting. Find, find, find some new friends around the place by inviting them through the connection card. That's right. And um, it's not too late to invite someone right now, in fact, Mike. You could just right. get the link, send it to some friends, and yeah. they uh, could jump online with you. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Hey, let's pray this morning. Uh, awesome. We love to pray over all the requests of our community. We believe God is a God who is able. So would you pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are near every one of us. Yes, Not only near, but you are able, you are powerful. Yes, and so we lift up every situation yes, and every circumstance. Lord, you yes, know what we need and you can deliver it in your time. So we trust you in this moment, Lord. We trust you for health. Mm -hmm. We trust you for provision. Yes. We trust you for mending of broken relationships. Yes, Lord. We trust you for salvation entering people's hearts. Yes, and we Lord. trust you that you would take us into a great future, glorifying your name. We pray yes, all these Lord. things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God this bless morning. you.
won't prosper when the darkness falls it won't prevail for the god i serve knows only how to triumph my god will never fail sing it out god our god will never fail i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord we're gonna see a victory we're gonna see a victory for the
Hi Church, hope you enjoyed that worship space. Everything we do at C3 Church Lane Cove is about worship, worshipping God. 
And worshipping God with our tithes and our offerings is something we do every week. Many of us will have already given uh, via direct debit um, online, but we always give the opportunity. We want to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to participate again today. So you'll find details of how to get involved with that on your screen. Now in Matthew um, 16 verse 15, Jesus asks his disciples the most important question, the one that he really asks the whole world. Who do you think that I, Jesus, am? Who am I? Now, Peter responds in verse 16. He says, you are, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 18, Jesus says, Peter, you're absolutely correct. And then he says something extraordinary, unexpected even, and that is why I am going to build my church. Now, we don't always put Jesus and church together. Perhaps we should think about that. You see, once we know Jesus and who he is, the next step for us is to see what church is. You see, church is actually Jesus' vision for what comes next in the world. And Jesus hasn't come back yet. Church is still his ongoing vision for what's supposed to be happening in the world. We, we are literally the, the ambassadors of Jesus in the world. And so notice he says to Peter, um, I think it's in verse 17, he says, And I say to you, I say to you, Peter, you are Peter. Peter becomes a partner in the building of the church. Jesus isn't thinking, I'll build my church and leave everybody else out of it. No, he says, I say to you, Peter. Can I uh, encourage us as a community to have a, a personal vision for building church? Not just a personal vision for me and Jesus, but a personal vision for building Jesus' vision on earth. Jesus does. He has a personal vision for us to get involved in that. And he calls you and I to do it. I will, he says, I will build my church, but I invite you to partner with me in the building. Isn't that an awesome thing today? So why don't we take up um, our, our phones or whatever we're using to, to uh, give today. And before we give, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have this awesome vision for building your church, for building people into a relationship with Jesus, for changing communities on earth, for being present with us as we gather. And thank you, Lord, that you include us as partners in the building. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, <laughs> I'm Michelle. Um, I've been with C3 Church for about a year now, and I like our produce. <laughs> Growing up, I had a difficult childhood. Uh, I was in a dark place, and I was very depressed and very lost and it got to a point where I admitted myself to the hospital and I think that's when my mom realized that she had to try something different. She was getting very desperate. Um, I had no hope, no light and everything was meaningless and I was broken and one day my mom's work colleague recommended her church to my mom and my mom was desperately asking me, can you, can you try this church one last time? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I've, I had no energy to say no anymore and I just didn't care at that point. And I, so I followed her to this new church. It was a bit unsettling and scary, but I just gave it a go. I just followed her every week. And then one Saturday, I mean, sorry, one Sunday, uh, this missionary came to me after the service and she told me that she was praying. And as she was praying, God gave her a message for me. And I didn't know this person and she didn't know me and we never talked before. 
so it was really weird but I, I received this Bible verse which was Isaiah 43 1 to 5 and as I was reading it my hands started trembling tears started rolling out of my eyes I didn't understand what was happening but there was this wave of immense love and warmth and healing and I couldn't comprehend it but I knew that there was hope and it was like God was telling me I am here. Spiritually I think I was getting better. I was definitely more hopeful. I had somewhere, I, I kind of had direction but life didn't get any easier. In 2016 my mom just suddenly told me she's going back to Korea and I wasn't ready for that. And I couldn't believe my mom was leaving me. And But that Bible verse, Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And it was like God was telling me, I am going to take care of you not your mom, not the people in the church. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to build you and uphold you. And it was like my trust just shifted and I could tell God was trying to get me to go to a different path. Like as in he wanted to he wanted me to see him and follow him and my troubled heart turned into a peaceful one. But I think the real turning point was during one of the, the ser services. It was the preach was about Jesus reappearing to his disciples after his resurrection. And he comes to his disciples and tells them, peace be with you. At that moment, I don't know what happened, but the words peace be with you, it just changed everything. My mind was like getting rearranged. I don't know how to explain it, but Jesus, he not only died for us, but rose to life. But not only that, he came to us, to help us, to give us peace. And I think that moment, I like I've heard these words before, but I think in that moment, I've accepted those words. And God, I had so much trust issues, but that moment he helped me trust in him through Jesus. And everything changed. I still make mistakes and there's a whole bunch of things that need work. I struggle but I won't despair because even if I fail I know God's love never fails. is 
Hi Church, wonderful to be online again yeah. together. Great message coming up today. You have Pastor Mandy. How yeah. are you, dear? I'm going really well, sweetheart. I'm so excited to be speaking today. We're really I'm looking excited forward. too. It's going to be great. So looking forward to that. And I'm really enjoying at the moment with our series on the Sermon of the Mount, thinking about practices yes. and re- rebooting those a little and and I've always found that the really great thing about speaking is that you get so much out of it yourself um, in preparing that De- message definitely us. definitely so what are you talking about today okay well I'm not going to give the entire game away but there's a there's a 3c summary you'll like this yes uh, so conflict caring and confidence so Boom. 
you obviously have to to wait to hear that. But hey, lovely news. We've got a beautiful new baby girl in church. Yes. Isabella. So a big shout out and congratulations to Donna and to me, her first little girl. So beautiful. So good. Everyone's well. Mum and baby are really well. Yeah. And I'm so enjoying in worship spaces seeing more and more people in person because we've really missed people. And Yeah, I didn't realise how much I sort of I saw a couple of guys I hadn't seen for six months. And if you see kids and they've grown suddenly, yeah, really amazing. Really. uh, I do actually love people. You do. <laughs> no, of course you do. <laughs> and so many visitors, people bringing their friends who are loving it, who are coming back, mm-hmm. you know, which is great. I'm just really loving that actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's coming up then? Well, we're sending out an update um, either this week or next week uh, to, just to help everybody with what's been happening over the last six months and also just how to remain connected. Mm. Some people are so important. not quite sure about WhatsApp yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, also, things to pray about, uh, how to yeah. pray card. So important. Um, moment, we want yeah. everyone at the moment to turn your care into prayer. Great. Um, you know, it's an uncertain time, so let's let's start praying about it. Mm-hmm. Um, masks have become oh, the new yes, fashion your statement. Black Darth Vader mask. I'm pretty gangster in <laughs> worship spaces at the moment, um, if I must say so myself. Um, um, if you're coming to that, uh, don't forget 10, 15, and 11, 30 Sundays. And 10, 15 families with the Kids Church Program. Then That's right. To um, seeing you. Youth is COVID safe. Yeah, um, Friday if, night. If the, the young, place to be. if the youth are, are bored at home, they can come, mm, um, love and to see they'll them. be looked after. Fantastic. And uh, so it's really cool. So, what are you seeing at present, sweetheart? Look, I mean, I just think um, <clears throat> we're kind of getting a bit used to this season at the moment. But um, I think you know we love to get that sense that um, if we can control it, then we're secure. Yeah. Right. Um, like people in the media are talking, it really frustrates me a bit actually, people in the media talking about a post-COVID world. And, and calling it a bit early. Calling it a think. little early, yes. And others are saying, hey, you know, we, we, we should have expected a pandemic. Right. Actually, um, history doesn't really work no. like that. No. Um, it never has. No. Um, it's course. always full of surprises. Mm. And governments, I think, are doing their best. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, you can be critical if you like, but that, but... People, it's it's all a try this and try that situation yeah, at course. the moment. But look, everyone is guessing about the future at mm-hmm. the moment and we just have to understand they're all guessing. Yeah, right. Um, what we do know about the future is that Jesus is able to make us stable. Fantastic. Um, he's yeah. proven that. And uh, I like Psalm 40. Yeah, um, wonderful. You know, <clears throat> it, in Psalm 40 it says that God pulls me out of the mud. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, you get stuck. You feel stuck and helpless. Mm. He, he pulls mm. us out of the mud and he sets our feet upon a rock. Beautiful. And he makes yeah. our footsteps firm. Fantastic. So I think I think we need to just trust God. You need mm. to lift our hands to God and say, God, if yeah. you're feeling uncertain. Yeah. Look to him. So why don't we pray? Let's pray. God, we look to you today and we're so thankful for you that you are our security in a very volatile world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. That you are merciful and yet you are mighty. Lord, thank you for your hand. I pray for each of us today that you would guide and direct our steps, protect each one. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have Have a great great time. See you. Bye. Hey church, great to be with you again on our online church experience. If I haven't met you yet, my name's Pastor Mandy Ambler and together with my husband Simon, we lead this wonderful church, otherwise known as C3 Church Lane Cove. And for those of you who've been watching for a while, you'll know we're in the middle of a fantastic series about the Sermon on the Mount, um, all about how to practice being God's people and I find in this uh, coronavirus season that it's great to refresh those basic practices which can get a little thrown by that time that we're in. So why don't you grab your Bible, maybe that's a paper Bible or an app on your phone or just look to the screen and together we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 11. I'm just going to read that through for us now. Jesus said, Judge not that you not be judged, for with what judgment you judge you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove that speck 
from your eye. And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So if I could sum this passage up, Uh, I would sum it up as three C's, conflict, caring, and confidence. C3, I rather like that idea. So let's just jump into conflict. So let me just read those couple of verses again. Jesus said, Judge not that you not be judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? But do not consider the honking great plank in your own eye. Or how do you say to your brother, Here, let me help you with that. Let me remove the speck from your eye and look, the plank is in your own eye, hypocrite. There you go, gentle Jesus, meek and mild strikes again. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Life is full of conflicts, as I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, Not just conflicts, you know, world conflicts, but, you know, conflicts between people. It's only a matter of time, any given day, before you will feel upset, disappointed or annoyed or actually quite angry. And we all, of course, make mistakes, right? So how do we handle conflict with each other in a godly way? Because the fact is, you have to judge. Life requires that we make judgments all the time. But how do you do what's right with that? And what keys to conflict resolution does Jesus give? One of the things I love about the Sermon on the Mount is that it's so ancient and yet it's so timeless. You know, (laughs) Um, human conflict is as old as man itself. And so I love the fact that even in this pandemic season, there's some great wisdom that we can gather from this. Number one, you've got to deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. If you want to improve in conflict resolution, and you know what, I think it's a life skill that we can all, it doesn't matter how young you used to be, right? It's never too late to improve in conflict resolution. If you want to improve in this area, the first thing you've got to do is examine your own attitude to people. It's got a sting, but it's worth it if you want to improve. And then the other important thing that Jesus is talking about here is that God will judge you for how you respond to others. God is watching us, you know. Am I responsible for others? No, I'm not. But I am responsible for my own response before God. So let me ask you a couple of quick and uncomfortable questions. How do you respond to conflict? Do I run away? (laughs) I know I've done that before. Just avoided it. Just avoid the person. You know, don't respond to that text. Just avoid them. Just don't talk to them. Maybe that's how you respond to conflict. Or do I blow up, you know, on my Mount Vesuvius when conflict happens? Do I see others that I'm in conflict with as God sees them? You know, with generosity. Or am I harsh with them? Am I more interested in winning the argument because I'm so competitive and I've got to win and I've got to prove that I'm right? Or am I more interested in winning the person? Hmm conflict. So moving on from that, if we can, scrape this off off the floor, um, to caring now. 
Matthew 7 verse 6, Jesus said, Do not give what is holy to dogs, to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. It's a bit dramatic, isn't it, Jesus? Goodness me. If you really love people, you know, shouldn't you always just keep on giving? Jesus says, no, you shouldn't. That doesn't seem very loving, man. You thought you were a Christian. You had people uh, say that to you? Yeah, fun, isn't it? In that case, Jesus wasn't a very good Christian, was he? He preached to everyone who would listen, but he only gave special attention to those who were following him and eager to learn from him. It's a bit of animal imagery going on here with dogs and pigs. Let me clear this up for you. In Bible times, we're not talking about pampered dogs with eyelash extensions and constantly going to the groomer. This was not what they were talking about. You know, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to visit the slums of Delhi as I did three years ago. Uh, before I went, the travel doctor gave me all the inoculations. I felt like a pin cushion. And she said, look, rabies shots are really expensive, but I don't need to give them to you unless you're planning on patting anything furry in the slums of Delhi. Whatever you do, don't go near the monkeys and don't go near the dogs. I thought she was joking. Until I got there and I discovered what the dogs of the slums of Gaziabad look like. They ain't pretty. I gotta tell you, you do not want to be patting those things. They are an unclean animal. And of course, in Jewish culture and also Islamic culture, pigs are unclean for very good reason. There is nothing they will not eat. So with that in your mind, let's remember what Jesus said. First of all, do not give what is holy to the dogs. And that's his way of saying, don't give to people who cannot receive from you. In my experience, unfortunately, some people can be very invested in their victimhood. And by that, I mean they're like this bottomless pit of neediness. You know, people can change. I've seen that, which is awesome. Our God is a redeeming, redemptive God, right? But God doesn't control people and neither should we. Family therapist Rabbi Edwin Friedman put it this way. He said, people cannot hear you unless they are moving toward you, which means that as long as you are in a pursuing or rescuing position, your message will never catch up, no matter how eloquently or how repeatedly you articulate your ideas. It can seem a little counterintuitive, but it makes sense. And the second statement Jesus makes about caring is this, nor cast your pearls before swine. That has actually become a saying that is common in our English vernacular without most people realising that Jesus said it first. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Obviously, pearls represent things of great value. Pigs, because they will literally eat anything, don't give them your pearls to eat. Okay. In, in other words, don't give your best and most valuable things to people that will not appreciate it. You know, if you've got a friend that's really, really happy drinking cask wine, don't waste your Grange Hermitage on them is my advice. So finally, amazing wisdom from Jesus about conflict, about caring for people, and finally, about confidence. So in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, gives the kid a rock? Here you go, son. Here's a rock. Go chew on that. Or if he asks for a fish, you're going to give him a red belly black snake, are you? Uh, well, if you then being evil, Jesus doesn't mince his words, does he? Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Let me say, I think there's a little that's lost in translation in this passage that we translate ask, seek, knock, because the original language gives the idea of a present continuous verb. 
So it's ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. I think in this pandemic season, a lot of our practices have taken a bit of a knock. And we wonder how we should continue when we don't really know where the finish line is. Someone said that to me recently. I don't know how to, how to run this race when I don't quite know when, when or where this pandemic is going to finish. And I think that's a really valid thing. But I think there's actually a lot of circumstances in life like this where we have chronic issues that we don't know where the finish is. So how do we have the confidence to continue in a chronic crisis? <laughs> You know, there's some crises that are acute, they're over and done with quite quickly. You might, you know, get a splinter in your finger, well, a week later it's better. But the way in which we continue in the chronic crises of life really requires confidence from God. You know, what, I wonder what you're facing. You know, in my experience, the pandemic has just been a layer on top of all the existing stuff we were dealing with, right? So I wonder what chronic crisis you're dealing with. Perhaps it might be a health issue. These things can really wear you down. Or it might be a relationship problem with, with someone close to you that is just not fixing up. These chronic issues, God wants us to be confident. Asking, there's three kinds of asking. Asking refers to gifts, asking God for gifts. Please give me what I need, Lord. Seeking is a different type of asking. It's looking to God for wisdom from him. We all need that. And knocking, when you knock, you don't just knock in the air, you knock on a door, right? So that's when we're asking God to give us direction to the way ahead. I wonder how you see God when you ask him for the things that you're needing, for the gifts that you're needing, for the wisdom that you're needing, for the direction that you're needing. I wonder how you envisage God. It's incredibly, incredibly important because how I see God as I'm asking him will affect both the way that I ask and what I receive from him. For example, do we see, as Jesus says here, God as our Father in heaven? Or do I see him as my CEO in heaven you know, I've worked for multinational companies before and I would barely know the CEO's name. I'm confident they wouldn't have known mine. They were over in America or in Europe somewhere. Completely, they wouldn't even know my name, let alone all, all my circumstances and the problems I'm facing. They would have no idea. Or perhaps we can see God as our dictator in heaven who we've got to obey or we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Or do we see God as our helpline in heaven. Thank you for calling the Heaven Helpline. Please press 1 for relationship issues. Press 2 for finance. Press 3 for healing of chronic illnesses. And press 4 to speak to the real God. Approximate wait time, eternity. Jesus reveals everything that we need to know about God, in particular, that he is our heavenly father, not just my personal father, but our heavenly father. How wonderful. Now, God isn't just any kind of father. He is a father who gives. It clearly says in that passage that he's giving his kids the things that they need. Bread and fish represent staple things that we all need, keeping in mind Jesus grew up around and, and was refer, he's referring to the Sea of Galilee where his followers were mostly in the fishing industry, okay? So fish was a staple meal to them. It wasn't a luxury item. He wasn't saying if you go to your heavenly father and ask him for, I don't know, caviar. Okay, that's fish related, but it's pretty bougie. Uh, it's pretty niche, right? God is a father who gives and he gives generously, and not only is God a father who gives, but he's a father who knows how to give us good things. He's not going to be the kind of father that if a child asks him for bread, that he's going to give him a boulder to suck on, you know. He's not going to give him the red belly black snake. He's a father who gives good things. 
And I wonder when we come and we ask our Heavenly Father for things, do we ask for things that we think are best? Or are we prepared to receive from God his best for us? It can be a bit of a different situation there. And Jesus said when he prayed, not my will but yours be done. You know, God, I would really like this situation to happen. Perhaps you're single and you'd really like to be married. It's a good thing to want, right? Lord, you know I would really like to be married. But Lord, I surrender to you, not my will but yours be done. It could be any issue at all, not my will. Are we prepared to surrender, bring our desires to him, but actually then surrender them? to him but when we know what God is like our father in heaven it gives us confidence to not just ask once and then run off but to keep on asking and can I really encourage you to refresh that to reboot that to lift up the hands that hang down so in summing up conflict caring And confidence is an opportunity to practice our faith in God in this time. And I think that when we follow what Jesus has given us here, this beautiful passage, that we can have greater confidence in all of our relationships, both with God himself and with his people. I'd love to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, (laughs) I am so glad that the God that we love and serve is a generous God who is for us. Lord, you are for us. You're not against us. And Lord, you are with us through the fire of this terrible pandemic time. Lord, I pray your deep comfort on everyone here who's struggling. And Lord, that we would see miracles. I pray for breakthroughs for those that are waiting on them. And Lord, I pray for greater confidence for each of us as we move forward in life with you. In your son Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're watching today, it would be remiss of me not to extend an opportunity to you to receive Jesus. We would love to hear from you. If you're watching and you're thinking, you know, I used to follow Jesus a while ago and, you know, life just kind of got in the way. But actually I I realise, you know, in this pandemic I'm hearing from people that are realising, oh my goodness, I've let my most important relationship with God slide. And if that's you, you know, the great news is it's not too late and God is for you. He's not against you. Why don't you reach out to us through our uh, the connect option on the screen? We would just love to hear from you and perhaps have a coffee or talk on the phone and catch up with you. But I know God's forgiveness is always there and he's the God of the fresh start. He's the God of the first, second, third, fourth and fifth chances, right? So we would just love to speak with you and God bless you. Amen. See you. Hey, wasn't that great? That was so good. What a great message. Fantastic Such a blessing message. to be part of this church. Amen. Hey, if you uh, want to catch this message again, or in fact the whole service, just jump on our YouTube channel, C3 Church Lane Cove, and you can watch it anytime in the week. Yeah, go back over it, refresh your mind. Awesome thing to do. And we're looking forward to seeing you next week. See you guys. God bless you.